Hello, in this video I am going to be demonstrating a very very simple two-stage amplifier. I have a common emitter here and a common collector type uh, amplifier built and I'm using two rails on it, two voltage rails that is a VCC and a VEE uh, so a positive and negative voltage with respect to ground and these are BJTs they are both N NPN type 3904 type BJTs and so I do have a speaker here but I'm going to demonstrate something with that a little bit later uh, but first before I get into that I'm going to do a limit test with the voltage swing on the output unloaded and then next I'm going to do a frequency sweep across uh, 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz and we'll see what that frequency response looks like in real-time transient it's not going to be plotted on a, a, a uh, frequency um, domain type of scale just in real time just see how it looks as it sweeps across frequencies whether or not it um, uh, whether or not there's phase differences, separation between input and output, or whether or not, more importantly, for the most part, um, how much the signal either diminishes or grows in amplitude across a certain range of frequencies. Next, um, I will do a, um, a, a test where I sweep across some, free, a, you know, a, a much smaller range of frequencies and do that with some sound. I, you know, I, I could sweep across you know, the whole entire 20 to 20 kilohertz, but of course this speaker is not going to be able to produce all of that. Um, and quite likely, even if it could, you probably wouldn't really be able to hear it anyways. So that is a short outline of what I'll do with the testing of this. So let me go ahead and turn on some power to it turn on my oscilloscope so let me go ahead and apply my signal my input signal this is an input signal of uh, 100 millivolts peak to peak and I have a lot of noise on that signal so let me try to reduce that as much as possible uh, most oscilloscopes have this ability to um, To use a filter and I'm going to turn my filter on and it looks a little bit better uh, depending on where I put that filter it'll it'll get a little bit better looking for the cutoff it's a low pass filter by the way okay that looks better so let's go back to what I'm measuring here so about a hundred millivolts peak to peak uh, being input into this and I have what am I getting out on channel 2 which is the output of the amplifier itself I'm getting 3.44 volts output so uh, let's do the math so 3.44 divided by approximately uh, 0.1 these are both volt peak to peak values and I get a gain of 34 so that is my gain so I'm going to increase my voltage here and let's see where we peak out that's uh, 0.2 volts peak to peak for input we're still looking good on this let's go further I'm gonna have to change my scale to, to uh, still be able to see the wave there. And you just keep increasing it until you start to see some distortion, some clipping on the uh, wave. So as long as you don't see any distortion on your signal, you just keep going. And again, this is a um, 31 volt 
uh, rails that I have distributed across these two transistors. So right about there is where I start seeing some noticeable uh, distortion, particularly on the top. So you also want to look at the symmetry as well. Uh, it's able to reproduce the signal a little bit better on the bottom than on the top. Um, I'm, I'm seeing uh, for, for voltage max on the top, I'm seeing like figures of about 27 volts. And on the bottom, I'm seeing figures of about negative 28 and a half, 20, negative 29. Uh, so it's not perfect by any means, but uh, these are some, some of the uh, non-ideal responses that you'll get from actual real-world transistors, uh, such as the 3904, uh, 2N3904, that is. Uh, so voltage, uh, maximum voltage peak swing <coughs> is... Uh, from a volt peak to peak range is 56 volts. So that's pretty good. Uh, if you take 56 and you divide that by 62 volts that I have for rails, that means that you're using uh, approximately 90% of the voltage range that you have for your power supplies, which is, you know, a, a good goal to set, I think, if you care about voltage swing. Um, you may have other goals for your amplifiers, but for my amplifier, I made a goal to have at least 85% of the voltage rails that I use for a voltage swing. Okay, so that's about where I peak out where uh, my wave still looks... Um, generally undistorted and if I go further I'm going to clip and so where I would say where I start to clip I'm around like 58 59 let's say 59 I'm starting to see figures of 59 59 over 62 gives you 95 percent so at about not at about 95 percent I start distorting where um, where it's basically something where you, you would say that's the absolute limit. And so that is that. So I'm going to move on to the next, uh, the next section in this demonstration, which is a frequency sweep. So I'm going to reduce all of this. And by the way, let me put on some cursors. I had some cursors pre-set up here. Let me turn those on. Go back to measure, and those are my cursors. So let's see, that's about where I peaked out. Yep. And I'm going to use these cursors to see, you know, as, as references to see how does this change when I sweep across the, uh, the frequency range that I set in my function generator. So, so I have my function generator set up to go from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And I'm going to do that over a time span of five seconds. And it's going to be on frequency sweep. And I'm going to put it into a linear mode of sweeping uh, as opposed to a logarithmic mode. And let me adjust this so that I get to be able to see this correctly. Um, all right. So it is sweeping across the whole entire range from 20 to 20 kilohertz. And so this is what you want to know um, if you plan to use this for like an audio amplifier because that is the entire approximate range of, of possible human hearing, assuming that you have speakers that can reproduce that sound. And... Um, as far as I see it, I, I just don't see any um, either uh, uh, amplifying or 
or attenuation of any frequencies in there. It looks like a very, very, very flat response, which is the ideal. That's what you want. You want a very flat response. And that's surprising to me because this, these stages are capacitor coupled. So um, I wasn't expecting this, but this is what it's looking like when I take a look at it on, on my uh, workbench here. So again, this is at my absolute maximum before I start to distort uh, with my signal and I, you know, I'm getting approximately 56 volts peak to peak and this is what the frequency response of this two-stage amplifier is looking like. So that is it for that test. Next test that I will do is I will do a, um, a sound test, which I will go from, I'm going to make a choice, I'll go from, it's arbitrary, I'll go from one kilohertz to, I'll say five kilohertz. So just to check, do a check with it on, this, on the oscilloscope. So it's over five seconds. And that is uh, one kilohertz to five kilohertz. You can even see it down here. Of course, this takes time to update because it updates at, at a uh, certain time interval. So you're not gonna be able to see those figures um, that much in real time. Okay, so with that being said, I am going to uh, enable my speaker just by hooking it up, and we're going to be able to hear this in um, real time as it sweeps through these frequencies. So the first thing I'm going to do is, I don't, you know, if this had the capability of uh, reproducing this wave from, you know, like, 56 volts peak to peak, I certainly don't want to put that into my speaker because then, then that would blow it up, right? Uh, speaker that small probably can't handle, is probably not designed to handle that much voltage. Um, however, the output resistance of my common collector uh, is relatively low, but not that low. Um, and so therefore, when I load it down with the speaker, it's going to go down uh, dramatically. And so you're not actually going to get that much over it. Uh, but in practice, you should always start from a small amplitude and then work your way up. You just want enough amplitude so that you can hear uh, your, your test that you're doing. Because of course, this is, um, this is only two stages of an amplifier. For, you know, generally, this is incomplete you know, unless you don't care about really loud volume levels and you don't care to get, you know, 56 volts peak to peak on your uh, speaker there, you know, which equates to you know, approximately uh, 18 volts RMS. Because if you were to do that, let's just do the math, um, 18, or it's, it's closer to 19, 19 volts RMS squared divided by 8 ohms. That's already 45 watts into an 8 ohm speaker. Of course that increases if the speaker impedance decreases, uh, but for starters at, at the very least, you know, 45 watts into it. So if you were able to um, deliver that to a speaker, you know, if you completed this amplifier and you had a output stage with low impedance, and you were able to do that, you would certainly probably blow a speaker this small. So uh, as a general practice, um, you want to turn that, you know, turn all of that down. So let's go back to something small like 100 millivolts peak to peak, and then we'll go up further from that. Um, that's how I'm going to start out.
first I am going to hook my speaker up to uh, my system here that I have for these two amplifiers and now that the speaker is hooked up I'm going to turn it on and I can hear a small tone so I'll go ahead and turn it up a little bit it's loaded down the common collector stage so you're only going to be able to hear uh, uh, but so much will not hear, but you're, you're only, not only, you, it's true, you're only going to be able to hear but so much, but you're also only going to be able to see but so much. Let's go ahead and do the sweep. And if I didn't want to sweep across the range, I could just uh, manually dial that in. I'm at about 700 hertz. That's 5 kilohertz. That's 6 kilohertz. three kilohertz, nine hundred hertz, one kilohertz. So that is it. So that is all that I'll cover in this demonstration. Uh, thank you for watching and have a nice day.